Longmont. My name is Karen Stallard. I'm the membership director with the Longmont Area Chamber of Commerce. The Longmont Chamber has been working hard to support our local businesses and connect the community during this challenging time because we don't think that being physically distanced means that we can't still socially connect and support one another. So I'd like to tag in Jessica Wanasek, the Chamber Event Director, to tell you a little bit about what we've been up to. Hey everyone, so the Longmont Chamber of Commerce has been hosting daily Facebook Live events Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. over on our Chamber Facebook page. We are featuring a local business or a nonprofit while having fun interactive activities, giveaways, and just connecting with our community. We wanted to share the fun with you after the fact, so we are airing all of our episodes from last week with you here now so you can enjoy. And we hope that you see some familiar faces from around Longmont. And remember, if you ever want to see the live thing, just tune into the Chamber Facebook page at 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Or check out a themed list of businesses over on our Chamber website. www.longmontchamber.org forward slash Longmont is open. And find a business that you would like to support. Enjoy the show! Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. Um, welcome back. We're happy to have you guys back with us today. Um, we're just going to give it a second or two and let the audience come in, uh, come in and, and get comfortable. I am super excited about uh, today's little episode. Um, we have some four-legged friends that are going to join us in a little bit. So you guys are going to want to hang out for this, this live stream today. It's pretty cool. Um, when you guys come in, let me know. I can see little heads popping in my feed, but um, it's always nice to know that I'm not in here by myself. So put something in the comments, say hello, how's your day going? Um, just something to let us know that you are here with us today. Um, and one lucky winner in your comments today, we're gonna have a little, little quiz like we do every day and somebody's gonna win um, a really cool prize that's being donated. Uh, by our special guest today. So make sure that you guys are hanging out for the rest of the stream and uh, tuning in and playing with the contest with us. So hi, Karen. She's my partner in crime hanging in here with me. <laughs> I am excited too. Um, I can't wait for this one. It's really, it's going to be super cute. Um, so as you guys are coming in, comment, let me know that you're here. If you guys want to see the list of businesses that we are showcasing each day of the week, um, go over to the Longmont Chamber Facebook or website. Sorry, Facebook website. Uh, our website it's www.longmontchamber.org forward slash Longmont is open, and you'll see um, the categorized list of businesses there. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. Come in, come in, say hello to us. Um, okay, we're going to get going. My name is Jessica Wanasek. I am the event director with the Longmont Chamber of Commerce. Um, we are doing these Facebook daily lives for you guys so that you can see what the amazing businesses and nonprofits are doing uh, in your area. Um, and as some of them start to their reopening strategies and stuff, we're here to help you guys figure out what's the best way that you can support these businesses and nonprofits. Um, so today is our Thankful Thursday. This is the day that we highlight uh, charities and nonprofits um, that are working their little tail offs in the area. Um, and so I am with that. I am super excited to bring in um, our special guest today. And we'll bring her in here in a second. I would like to introduce you guys to Grace Degnan. She is the marketing associate over for the Colorado Horse Rescue. Yeah. Hello. How are you, Grace? I'm really good. It's um, it's been a beautiful day out here on the rescue, <laughs> on and off unpredictable rain, but <laughs> right. Um, it's always when we're gonna get ready to go live that this this exactly. stuff needs to happen. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Um, yeah, but so today you have myself and um, one of our equine trainers, Susan Chandler. Hi, Susan. Hi. Everybody in the comments, you guys say hi to Grace and Susan. Let them know that you're here. Um, we are live with the Colorado Horse Rescue today. So we are going to um, get a little feast of um, some horse stuff, some horse related yes. things today, right? Okay, yes. so 
Um, I like to kind of ask you, you know, some people may know all about you and some people don't. So I like to kind of start off um, these streams with you guys telling a little bit about yourself. So can you share how long um, Colorado Horse Rescue has been operating? Yeah, um, we were founded and started our operations in 1986, actually. Um, so we have been operating for over 30 years, about 34 years now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And um, can you tell everybody where you are located? Yes, we are located um, in Longmont, Colorado um, on North 65th Street. Very cool. Kind of on the west side then of Longmont, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, tell us what you guys are doing these days. And um, I know you guys have been closed down, but what um, does your maybe possibly your reopening strategy look like or share with the crew what, what you guys are doing these days? Yeah. So our coming into the whole pandemic situation, the COVID situation, we really knew that we needed to hone in our like top two priorities. Um, our first priority is always maintaining the health um, and safety of our horses. We have a herd of 60 horses at any given time. That's our capacity that we wow. run at at all times, pretty much. Um, so our number one priority is always making sure that our horses are safe and healthy and getting the top care that um, that we provide for them. So our second priority to support that has to also be supporting our team and make sure making sure that our um, our small staff and limited volunteer um, base during this time also is able to stay healthy. So um, we're pretty bummed, but we had to take our um, normally over a hundred person wide um, volunteer program. We have over a hundred volunteers who help run the daily operations of this yeah. time, um, every week. And so we had to scale that all the way down to about 10 people per week. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's those 10 awesome, so amazing, vital volunteers, and then half of our staff. So we have a staff of nine, and there are five of us um, on staff here with the volunteers helping just run the daily operations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's really our main priority right now. We're committed to staying, um, keeping our doors closed to the public um, through May, and then we're going to reevaluate see where Colorado's at with all of this um, sure see how to go about next steps we are um, we did just open up to adoption appointments um, but only by like strictly scheduled appointments and um, it's all one-on-one -on -one pretty much um, with one of our trainers and um, yeah we're just doing our best to disinfect everything wear the masks and just do our part to keep our community safe. Oh, taking care of those little four-legged babies out there, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. I um I love horses, but I am I have such an allergy to them. Uh, um, yeah. The first time I ever rode a horse, I looked like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, and I had <laughs> hives from head to toe. And my folks ended up they didn't know what was going on with me, so they threw me in a swimming pool just to get it washed, you know, all the dander or whatever washed off. And yeah, but uh, I love them, and I, I'm fascinated by them. They're such gentle giants. Um, yeah, they really are. They really are. Right? Yeah. So, um, I had some notes written down. Um, you had you have a couple of programs that you guys are um working. Do you want to share a little bit about those? Yeah. Um. So one program that we're really passionate about um, is our leg up program that I'll mention. Um, we really prioritize. Um, we want to be a source of help and a big resource to the equine folks in our community. Um, so that program, again, it's called the leg up program, right. um, is a program where we um, we have devoted funds in that program to support um, horse owners in our community going through a temporary financial struggle. So especially in this, um, in this crazy time that we're going through right now, we've seen definitely an uptick in surrender applications mm -hmm. and adoption applications, but, um, that program, um, 
as long as the individuals qualify for it. Um, it has again, it it's going through a temporary, um, you know, situational financial struggle time yeah. for that owner. Um, yeah, but that program really, really helps us to support horse owners in our community and help keep horses who could fall at risk if they um, didn't have access, if their owners didn't have access to that program. Um, it really helps them to stay in their homes for the long term. And that was the leg up program, you said? Yeah, the leg up program. So and they can... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, so if somebody um, had questions about that, they could find out more about that on your website. Is that right? Yeah, definitely on our website. Okay. And we'll put that website in the comments as well, but you guys can um, see what they're doing over there. It's www.chr.org, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, you had, is there another program or was that just the only one that you guys were doing right now? Definitely that one. And then also just in general, our training program in general, um, we have two full-time trainers who um, still in all this chaos are actively working with our horses um, and to help them get gain vital skills that help them be really great um, equine citizens of the horse community. Oh, um, right. Our limited. <laughs> you guys are, it's well, it's a working, it's a working farm, right? You guys it are is, working. Yeah. yeah. How dare us break into your working day, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are in the middle of our volunteer shift that I, um, so we have two shifts a day. Um, oh, that's cool. So we have some volunteers still on site right now. Um, but yeah, definitely our training program. And then lastly, I would, um, definitely emphasize our foster program right now. Um, we recently put out kind of an ask to the community, um, to our community and beyond um, yeah. for foster homes. I have a little baby running in the running in the oh, back. Oh my <laughs> goodness! We'll, we'll introduce her in a bit. She's pretty fun. Um, oh. but, but yeah, so with the increase in surrender in surrender applications that I mentioned, um, we, of course, want to be able to take in as many horses as possible during this time um, yeah. that may be at risk of a vulnerable situation. Um, and the only way we can really do that is to um, continue moving horses out of our gates so that we can bring more horses in. So our foster program is definitely one that we're um, expanding at this time um, in different ways. And yeah, so if there are any horse people out there who have an extra stall or um, some extra land and maybe already have horse horses of their own um, who need another companion or something, cool. um, we're always looking and especially now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll hopefully, hopefully this live will send um, some people your way, even, you know, about the programs, how they can help. And yeah. then, you know, if they can foster to that, hopefully this, this will do some good for you guys. Um, I am kind of reading in some of the comments, Karen says, um, she thinks horses are allergic to her. They smell fear, which I, I have to <laughs> agree. <laughs> I agree, Karen. True, yeah. true. Okay. <laughs> So I am actually going to um, we're going to we're going to put the spotlight a little bit on you and Susan. So I'm going to shrink myself down and you guys are going to take it from here and show us um, some fun stuff that you're doing. Take it oh, away. Awesome. Well, yeah, we thought that it would be fun um, if we just introduced uh, a couple of our horses out here. So I'm going to flip the, the camera on our horse trainer, Susan. Hi, and Susan. This is, <laughs> and this is Bristol. And Bristol. Aw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Bristol was actually a part of an animal control seizure. Um, she came to us. It was a Mustang operation gone hoarding situation. Um, oh. So, yeah, she is about four years old, I believe. Yeah, three or four. Um and yeah, she's just adorable and sweet. Oh, she's and so cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so she um, is one of our companion type horses. She, again, is super young, but just because of some confirmational things about her um, 
the way her body is and everything, we all of our things. Um, she is non rideable, <laughs> but oh, yeah, okay. we, we work really hard to strike a balance here between um, rideable and non rideable horses. We definitely think every single horse out there deserves a safe pathway and a safe landing. So um, we. Oh, look, it's going to come to <laughs> our- yeah, so we work really hard to prioritize oh. both those um, companion type non-rideable horses as well as rideable um, and working horses. So, oh, she's yeah. a beautiful horse. Yeah, I bristle. <laughs> and Susan, do you want to kind of talk about like what you still do with her as a non-riding horse? Yeah. So one of the biggest things that we're we've become recently very passionate about is liberty training. So that is training without the use of halters and physical restraints and using more like basic communication styles within like a natural horse herd to kind of communicate what you want to do with your horse. And Bristol is a good example that just because she's not a riding horse doesn't mean she's still not useful to us as a companion. Oh, absolutely. So so what I'm kind of doing today with her (laughs) is teaching her some tricks and doing some fun things. And she especially loves to pick up her feet and she kind of does it on her own. So, sorry. So I want to be able to just give her a cue so that she can kind of pick up her feet elegantly. And we can oh, cool. Fancy later down the road. So I'm just going <laughs> to reconnect with her really fast. See if she'll kind of follow me. Nope. Can you come back? Good girl, Bristol. Good girl. And we'll see if we can't get her to work a little bit. I do use a lot of positive reinforcement. That's using treats to reward a behavior. It's much like dog training in a lot of ways. So you'll see me when she does what I want. <laughs> she, like, she looks like she's checking everybody out. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and, uh, it's showtime, Bristol. Like, Trick ready. pony. <laughs> uh, so when she does, oh, my goodness. She's so sweet. <laughs> When she does what I'm asking her to do, I'll say the word good, and that's her cue that she's about to get a treat. <laughs> she's like, I'm ready. <laughs> Hi, Bristol. <laughs> oh, I wish I could pet her little nose right to the I TV. Know. So I'm just going to use some pressure and release to kind of get her back in where I want her. <laughs> good girl. <laughs> oh, you're coming so hard. <laughs> I got to get it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just kind of use a physical tap on her legs to see if she'll just pick them up, and then we'll reward for that. Almost there. Hey! Yay! <laughs> Gets a tree when she turns her head away, because I don't want to reward any biting. It's all about manners. Yeah, <laughs> manners like a lady. Oh. <laughs> In that time, I barely had to touch her. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Good. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> no. She starts doing it by herself, which is fine, but we want to give her a physical cue so she's not just pawing all day long. <laughs> Hold on. Right. Hold on. So now I'm going to tap. Good. <laughs> and this is actually behavior that she started to give us all on her own. And Sometimes you could see that behavior as a naughty behavior, but we wanted to use it as a way to kind of reconnect with her a little bit and give her something fun to do. Can we do it on the other side? No. <laughs> Come here. So oh, she's so pretty. Yeah, she is beautiful. She's kind of got disconnected, so I'm just going to get her back in. Good girl. Okay. Can you do it with your butt towards the camera? Okay, we can just play on the side. <laughs> like, I'm done. Good girl. Aww. Good girl. Good. So this is a great opportunity to just have fun with them. Like, you don't need to have the expectation to get on a ride to have a good time with your horse. <laughs> oh, look at her. She's so cute. <laughs> we are getting a few questions while you guys are doing your little demo here. Um... Julie Christine says she looks like she has a sweet disposition. It's a giant dog and big hearts. 
Uh, and she's also asking, do you guys need volunteers currently? Um, I can, I can flip it around and answer that. Um, currently, like I kind of mentioned before, we are, um, just because of everything going on, um, we are keeping our volunteer base that are on site with us still, um, just down to that number of 10 volunteers who we know really well um, and already have a ton of experience with. Um, but absolutely feel free to apply to be a volunteer. We have a volunteer application on our website and um, a bunch of information about our volunteer program um, there as well. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend <clears throat> applying because once we do open up um, and open up back to the normal um, volunteer shift and everything will definitely be in need of volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good so question, that. Julie. Yeah. Great question. We absolutely love and adore our volunteers. They make this place go round. So. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh. She's such an <laughs> overachiever. <personal>. Right. <laughs> She's like, look at me. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Susan, do you think we should go meet the other one? <laughs> All right. Yes, so. please. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, I give, give Bristol a big hug. She is super cute. We love her. She's a good girl. <laughs> so over, um, we just have her loose in our outdoor arena right now. Um, we have a very sweet um, bull, or I guess she is a yearling now. She just turned one year. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> around, the star of the show. She's running over. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's my turn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this, it, who we're about to meet, her name is Daffodil. Like I said, she is just about a year old right now. Um yeah, we actually <laughs> we actually rescued her from a local livestock auction in Fort Collins. Oh. Yeah, so when she was just 12 days old. <laughs> oh my goodness, she's so yeah. cute. This is Daffodil. Uh, yeah, Daffodil. So when she was just 12 days old, her and her mom were actually um, kind of discarded at um, mm. at a local livestock auction, which is an issue a lot of the general public doesn't um doesn't know about it's kind of wow. <laughs> she's so cute um yeah it's one of those things <laughs> that is, kind of goes unnoticed in in the community um but it's a big big part of the at-risk horse issue in Colorado and all around the U.S. really um but yeah so at these livestock auctions that again we um rescued Daffodil and her mama at um Horses really either um, either go to a rescue or a um, or just to put it frankly, um, a meat or slaughter buyer is what they're called. Oh yeah, yeah. So oh my that, goodness, she is adorable. I know. Yeah, um, she yeah, is adorable. Now, <laughs> so at what really age then do you start? At what age do you start um, like training her? Then is, is are you working on that now? So we, I'll let, I'll let Susan take that since she's the trainer. Uh, so ideally, hey, when we get them this young, <laughs> we don't start them under saddle until they're probably like three to five, depending on their size. Um, but even when they're babies, that's a great time to get, get them introduced to a lot of different stuff so that they're not fearful when they get older. Um, so gotcha. Kind of just exposing them to every situation. Yeah, so we definitely make sure we want our horses, um, no matter what age they are, to just be set up for success once they're placed in their adoptive home. Um, and so Daffodil, you know, she she clearly loves people. <laughs> oh, she is adorable. Um, yeah, and so she's um, she knows all about, like, wearing a halter and things like that and just kind of basic things that... Um, are really no matter what home she goes into um, since we know she has a really solid um, like early on foundation here we know that she um, she'll just be less likely to be at risk of any um, bad situations in the future yeah so, 
yeah, and that's definitely why training is a is a huge part of our operation and um, something we really prioritize. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I we really appreciate you guys um, sharing Bristol and Daffodil <laughs> with us. Um, yeah. Karen, Karen's excited. She says baby horse in all capital letters. Um, <laughs> and that she's so thankful that you guys are there to help um, all these beautiful horses. So we, we second that. Um, that's amazing. Super yeah, cute. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that is really cool. Um, so I, every day I'm going to bring me back here. Tell, tell Susan and, and Daffodil, thank you so much for showing off a little bit. That was pretty cool. <laughs> so every day, um, Grace, we've been doing uh, like a giveaway. Um, and I said a little bit at the beginning of our live stream that we usually ask a question to the viewers and they have to answer it in the comments in order to win. Um, so we'll see if we can get anybody to uh, log on and, and win with us. Um, I am thinking of a question. I'm trying to think. I think what I will say is, okay, so the, to the viewers out there, what was the name of the first horse that Susan and Grace showed us in the other pin? What was her name? And while you guys are thinking of that, um, I just gave it to you a few seconds ago, so hopefully you guys were listening. Um, but while they are thinking of the correct answer, uh, Grace, is there anything else that you feel like the audience needs to know? Um, I would definitely, um, just love to let you guys know how you can support us and support the work that we do. Um, even in this time, we know that, um, every, so many people are, um, in tight financial situations and, um, we absolutely rely on the generous donations of the people in our community um, to keep this place running, keep our operations going, um, and save the horses that we are able to save um, yes. in every home. But yeah, we, we definitely only want people to donate if they feel that they can and if they're um, doing all right financially right now. Um, and there are so many other ways that you can support horses like Daffodil and and I won't say her other name. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with a B. I'm going to give that hint because nobody's coming in yet. What was the yeah. horse's name that uh, Grace and Susan just showed off? Not the baby horse, but the other horse. If you were watching. Yeah, yeah uh, but definitely there are so many, so many ways you can support us and organizations like us. Um, you can always follow us and share our content on social media. Um, we are on all platforms pretty much. That's part of my job to run those. Um, yeah, that definitely supports our organization a ton, just supporting that, um, social, um, social media platforms. Yeah. Um, yeah, but there are tons of ways to support these organizations. Um, just really get the word out. So many people just don't even know that there is a, a horse issue or a need. Yeah, for that there's a need adoption um in colorado and absolutely yeah yeah so any any opportunity you have even if it's just oh i watched a cool live, <laughs> today about right? the horse rescue. i saw the coolest horses today okay so it looks like people might be struggling a little bit with remembering the name so i think we might just have to do um a random drawing let's see grace let me see here um Okay, so the question was, what was the horse's name? Not the daffodil, not the baby horse. We are, I'm going to just pull a random. Grace, can you see any of the comments from where you are? Um, no? I can't right now. Okay, so I am going to just go ahead and pull a random one, and we're going to say Julie Christine. Julie Christine, if you are still watching, I just randomly made you today's winner. I know we, we may have we may have stumped some of you guys, um, but Grace, what was the horse's name? It was Bristol. <laughs> Bristol, yep. Yeah. Bristol, Bristol. Um, super cute horse that she showed us um, before Daffodil. So I maybe I threw the, uh, them off showing the baby horse. It may have distracted. No. <laughs> she, yeah, she's pretty polarizing. So right, right. All right. So Julie, Christine, you are today's winner. Um, I will get in touch with you when the live is over. Um, Grace, do you want to share what Julie won today? 
Yes, you won a Colorado Horse Rescue ball cap that I Yay. do not have with me at the moment. That's okay. <laughs> but, That's but okay. It's a really good, high quality ball cap. <laughs> Awesome. I'm sure she'll be super happy and we'll have to have her take a picture of it and, and send it when That's she has totally. it on. We'll have her send yeah. it into us. Awesome. Well, at, at this point, I would really like to thank both you and Susan for taking you guys' time out of your, your busy day. I know um, the audience just loves the little horses. I do too. Um, I, my sister-in-law is a an equine trainer as well. So we, we always love to see horses of any any size and shape so we really yeah. appreciate you guys and uh if you guys want to the viewers if you need to go check out their programs or if you'd like to donate go see grace and susan over at www.chr.org and check out all the amazing stuff that they're doing over there so with that grace i'm going to give you a virtual high five and thank you so much and you guys have a good rest of your day okay yeah, thank you so much for having us. You bet. Take care. Take care. That was so much fun. Um, so yes, Bristol was the first horse um, that was showing some tricks of lifting her her feet uh, on command. So that was pretty cool. And I may have you know stumped you guys out there watching, but um, that was the answer to today's question. And Julie, Christine, you are our today's winner. Um, I will get in touch with you. Um, baby daffodil is a year old and you can um, see all about both of those horses over at the Colorado horse rescue um, dot org website. Now, you guys, if you want to see the businesses that we are highlighting each day during these daily Facebook lives, uh, go over to www.longmontchamber.org forward slash forward slash Longmont is open and it'll show all the lists of businesses that we are working with. Um, tomorrow. Now I, I'm going to tell you all right now, you're going to want to come back here at four o'clock with a cocktail in hand because you are not going to want to miss our next, uh, feel good Friday episode, which is tomorrow. Um, Karen, my partner in crime, uh, is going to be doing some fun, fun stuff that you guys aren't going to want to miss. So tune in right here, four o'clock tomorrow until then. Be well, and I will be here with my cocktail in hand ready for tomorrow's Facebook Live. Love to you guys. Be well. Bye.